Shalom Rastafari. from I and I brothers uh Ja Kebra Neges. It's a wonderful, wonderful hip hop if we even use that term if we even want to use that terminology. Um some really good rap music, in other words, rapping about the truth. Um just a freestyle session and uh Shalom Rastafari and once again Shabbat Shalom Senbet Salam sabbatical peace to you and yours and to all of the faithful and the true and the King of Kings and his Christ, Ketachin Nam and Hanatachin Jesus Christos, to the glory of our Kedus, Adamawi, Haila, Salase. And once again, this is another sabbatical reading and feeding with uh, Wendem Machu, your brother, Wendem Yadon, in a Rasia Dinos, Teferi Neng. Now, um, this particular sabbatical reading and feeding, of course, we're still in the book of Shemot. You understand? And we would um, seek to encourage ones as they're able to, um, you know, afford to get a copy of this particular, of each, each one of the Hebrew books of the five books of the Bible. This is the Hebrew book of um, Exodus here with a collection of online um, studies, mainly the Wikipedia, and this is really to help us catch up, to help us really catch up. We as the once lost but now found Beta Israel, or we Afro-Shemites, uh, we um, black Hebrews and elect Rastafari, Ethiopian Hebrews, right? So now we're in the in the 22nd, the 2-2. We're in the 2-2 now of our weekly Torah portion readings and feedings that is called in the Hebrew Vayachel uh, or Vayachel, 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 Va or Wa and Yachel or Yachel, 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 Yachel. And that's the Hebrew for and he assembled, and he assembled. Now, those are the brothers and sisters who have been faithfully um, studying along with us, the Torah portion, our weekly Torah portion reading and feedings. No doubt, hopefully, you have downloaded and printed out a copy of these 13 pages of Jaz Sunshine for the sabbatical studies. And this document right here, the weekly, uh, the weekly uh, Torah portions or the Sabbath house readings from our website, www.lojsociety.org. So there's a lot of free materials there, um, study materials, materials you can use on your computer, and some of them which you can actually print out, such as this 13-page document that seeks to give a basic introduction to a very important part of us building as builders you know, of the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ and the restorers of the true divine monarchy. This is, this is the raising up of the foundations of David, of David, which were torn down according to prophecy, and you can refer to the book of um, Amos, I think chapter 9. We know chapter 9, verse 7, which says, Aren't you like unto the uh, children of the Ethiopians, unto me, O children of Yisrael, O children of Israel? So that's, a, that's another 
positive connection between we as Ethiopians and diaspora and our Ethiopian Hebraic and covenant Al Kidan Benai Barit family at home in Africa and all over the world. You know, saying all over the world, but mainly we're speaking of our root and our truth, which is Ethiopia, our African Zion, our African Zion. Now, this is the 22nd. Now, if you look at the chart on page 5, you will find that we have, first of all, the Amharic based on the Metzav Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals, or His Majesty's Authorized Bible. And this is how we hopefully can introduce some of the basic words as we go through certain teachings. And we're going to do more of this within our videos, hopefully, y'all willing, coming forward. So this is on the 20, 22nd. It's called um, Sebisibo, Sebisibo, or Sebisibo, um, and that is the Amharic for and he or and it gathered and it assembled and he gathered or it was gathered in the sense of he, it. This is the Amharic of Vayak Hel or Vayakhel, but really Vayak or Yak Hel. And it means any assembly. Now, if you look at our chart right here on page five, you will see that there's a asterisk. There's an asterisk next to um the twenty second Vayak Hel or Vayak Hel. And if you go to page, follow up on that asterisk, go to page 7, you will see that it says portions marked with an asterisk can be added to the following week's reading or the following week's um, nibab, as you say, bamarinya. The reading is called the nibab, nibab, or minbab, the particular readings in the Amharic and in the Gutiz, coming from our Gutiz, our Afro-Shemitic root. So what does that mean right there? That means that basically this particular Shabbat is the last um, Shabbatical reading from the book of Exodus. Now, here's where these notes come in very, very, you know, very, very handily. And as we study it, that's why we, we would highly recommend this. You can actually go to the, the Wikipedia page for each of the Sabbatical um, Parashah or the portions, and you actually find it up there. So those who may not be able to afford the book but still want to stay up to date, um, download our free chart, you understand, know our free chart, Sabbath House Readings. And just to give an example, we're on page 5 right now. And if you go to page five and number twenty, number twenty-two, you will see the after the slash, the second reading. The first reading is the Amharic, and the second reading, the secondary is the is the Hebrew within the subject. Let me just show you this. Most of you all should be familiar with this already, but in case you are not and you're new to this and want to study along, right here you'll see right here, right? So this is where we're at. So if you go to the second one after after the um after the after them hark, them hark is the first line, said this right? You see that right there and then you say see uh uh Vai Yak Hel or Yak Hel. You can look that up, any of the names for any of the Torah portion readings and feeding. So what this basically means for this particular week or this particular year too, is that 22 and uh, 23 in the Hebrew is known as um, uh, pe du pekude 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 right bamarinya ika dimer yihno ika dimer dimer yihno and this is the this is like the accounting so these two readings actually are combined. Now, let's go into this first of all, put this up here. This is our RSS, right, Rastafari Sabbatical Studies, for short as an acronym. This is number 22, 
right, number 22, just following along with this particular chart. Bamarinya, we call it um, Seb Sebo or Sebis Sebo, Seb Sebo. And in the Hebrew, uh, Vai Yag Hel. So let's first of all begin with the, with the Hebraic. You understand? Because there's a lot of information out there. This is why we chose to compile this based on the modern um, Judaic or Judaism. Both has the Ashkenazi comparative to the Sephardic. And overall, it's a very worthwhile study. It, it helps us to really catch up after 400 plus years. So the traditional way that it's spelled, if you want to look this up on the Wikipedia and just follow along if you don't have the book, as of yet, it's called Vayak Hail. Now, the more correct pronunciation is Vayak Hail, but the Ashkenazis, they pronounce the, 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 the wow as a vav. This is why some will say Yahweh instead of the more correct Yahweh, Yahweh. But be that as it may, this 22nd and the 23rd are combined. So you'll see there's an asterisk, right? There's an asterisk next to it, which means that it's combined. Now, the reasons why these two are combined, both uh, uh, Wayak Hel and uh, Pekude, are combined are going to be given to us right here. So let's go over this, all right? So grab your pen and your papers, bring a willing and attentive mind, as well as your sacred scripture, the B I B L E, and be prepared to receive some of the most amazing truths ever to reach these shores of the North Country, of North America, and the Caribbean, since our ancestors, the once lost but now found, Beta Israel, were sold into this captivity, fulfilling Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Document it, check it out for yourself. So, Wayakhel, the Hebrew, means, and he assembled. Now, this is the first word in the Parsha. This is the first word in this particular portion of our um, weekly, this week's Torah portion reading. It's the 22nd weekly Torah portion in the annual Judaic cycle of Torah reading, what we call the Orit Torah, Ethiopic is Orit, reading Minbab or Nibab. Now, this is the 10th reading in the book of Exodus. So it's the 10th in the book that's known in the Hebrew as Shemot, Bamarinya, Orit Zeat, the Torah of the coming out. Thus, the idea of Exodus. The Hebrew Shemot, like them, Harg Simoch, means the names, and that's based on the first, the first, um, the first, uh, what we can say, the first word or the first significant word, distinctive words they would call it. Right? So, this is the tenth reading. Vayak Hel, Vayak Hel is the tenth reading or it's the 10th in the book of Exodus, and the 22nd in this particular cycle for this year, 2012. Now, it constitutes Exodus chapter 35, verse 1, to Exodus chapter 38, verse 20. So, so this, is, this is the portion that would be read in, in the homes, in the family, just the basic reading of it. In, 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 the, in, the, in the synagogue, the mikorab, or the gathering on the, the Saturday evening, which they call in the West, in dyslexic, against the law, they call it Friday evening. But Friday evening is actually, from Jah's own calculation of time, is actually the Sabbath Eve. So this is why for Hebrews and Jews, the Sabbath begins on Friday, what you, what you know in the West as Friday evening. But if we study time from the beginning, you recognize that Babylon is running out of time. They have it backward. 
you know, we're saying so this helps us to even look at time in Jaws or the true God and fall of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, order properly. And time is very, very important. It says, it says to redeem the time because the days are kuful. The days are evil. The psalm says, um, um, teach us how to number our days. You know and teach us the rightful order, you understand, of the life which the true life giver and creator has created for us. So it's also a way of us giving thanks. But we're blessed in the doing. So keeping the Sabbath and is very important. And this portion, as well as last week's, the 21st, actually spoke on this. And we'll get into some of this in a little more detail. So we as um, black Jews, as well as other Jews, well, we in the diaspora, in the north country, the west, we read it in the 22nd Sabbath. So this is the 22nd Sabbath after the Simchat Torah, after the holy day and holy time that marks the beginning of our cycle of Torah readings and feedings. And this, is, this portion is generally um, read in, in March, in the month that you might know of as March. Now, there's the, lo, the, the lunisolar, the lunisolar Hebrew calendar. There's a, there's a lunar and a solar significance. There's a lunar and a solar significance to the calendar that we need to understand. Now, some speak about astrology or, you know, we're speaking about the sun, the moon, the star, but we're following what Jah has commanded us. You know, and as Christ says, if anyone seeks to do, you understand, to do the will, they will know of who the teachings are. So if one seeks sincerely with a willing and attentive heart and mind to do it, that's, that's where one really learns. You know, since I could testify to how I've benefited. Others who have done it can testify as well. But it's only when you yourself take that step in discipline. And we see keeping the Sabbath is that first step out of, out of the darkness, spiritually and otherwise, of, of Babylon. It's, it's that first step because there you are seeking to reconnect with the Almighty in obedience to his will. Not just as a Jew, you understand, but as a Christian or a Meshachawian, as a true follower of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Joshua Ha Moshiach. Now, the Luni Solar Hebrew calendar, what is it? Well, it's basically a calendar that's based on both the, the, the lunar, we, we count the new months from the Hebraic and the Holy calendar based on when the new month. So we, we watch the signs of the heavens according to the first book of Torah known as Genesis or uh, Berashit, Berashit, you know, saying chapter 1, verse 14. And you can document that. Please do document that. Read it, study it, and hopefully the Holy Spirit will, will, will give you the truth of it, will inspire you if you're willing to receive the truth of it. So the Luni Solar Hebrew calendar contains up to 55 weeks. There are 55 weeks in the Luni Solar Hebrew calendar, 55. Now, the exact number, it varies between 50, right, in common years, and 54 or 55 in leap years. So when we're looking at 55 weeks, we're looking at, ideally speaking, leap years. But in common years, in years that are not leap years, the weeks can vary, you understand, can, can basically um, vary um, from 50 more or less. For example, let's look at a couple of leap years. 2011 was a leap year. 2014 will also be a leap year. 2016 will be a leap year. And 2019 will be a leap year. Now, these years are very significant, even perhaps more so than December 21st, 2012, because that is only the beginning. 
should we say, you understand, of these days of tribulation. But it's not just the day, you understand? We have a seven-year, there's a seven-year period of time that we want to look at, too, when we look at it based on the, the menorah, you understand, the menorah, which is the lampstand. Now, Parsha Vayakhev, or the Parsha um, Sebsebo, 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 and he assembled, and he gathered, is read separately in leap years. So last year we would read um, Wayak Hel separately and um, Pekude in the next week, right? But in common years, for example, 2012, 2013, 2015, 2017, and 2018, Parsha Vayakhel is combined with the next Parsha or the next Kufl, the next portion. So this is the 22nd, so the 22nd and the 23rd. In um, common years, such as this year and next year, which, which, has, which are not so-called um, 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 leap years, these two readings are combined to achieve the number of weekly readings that are needed. So to complete the cipher of, of the weekly readings they combine. So this is one of the main reasons for that, that asterisk that you will see in our Sabbath house reading chart. And we're on page five. So if you have five, then look at the 22nd one. And after Vayak uh, Hell, you'll find the asterisk there, and then I think you go to page, uh, what was it, page um, 7, page 7, at the end of the 54, you'll see that it, we gave a short, a kind of short reference, but there's a footnote down there where we give a little more detailed reference on um, page 7 of the um, Sabbath house reading, so check it out. Um, for yourself and document it. Now, this particular portion, continuing from um, last Shabbat, last Senbet, continuing from there, it continues with this basic theme um, of the tabernacle. So we're now going to cover 35, verse 1 to 38 and 20. But really, within this particular Sabbath, this particular sabbatical week, since this is the last reading, for the Sabbath, um, in the book of Exodus, we're actually going to combine both of those. But it's very, it, it, it's, it's, it's very good as well to see how both of them combine. Though we may read a portion, a couple of chapters one week, and go into some studies here or there, and then the next week is continuing. I want you to see that it's, it all is continuing in, in the same theme, but we're taking like bite-sized portions to reflect on, to meditate on, and, and when necessary, and as necessary, to study and to go into some of the topical points and the themes. Now, we've done this before, and, and we're trying to get better at presenting these, these teachings. On some levels, we have to go into some of these sort of teachings where we go into a little bit more direct, more like a lecture, but in other vids and other presentations, we'll try to present more creative ways. And those of you who have certain skills, whether artistic skills and, and whatever skills to help us build this, this spiritual tabernacle, please feel free. Please, you know, reach forward. Let, you know, submit whatever ideas. Let, make I and I reason. You understand? But first, check out this reasoning here. because I think it, it, there's a connection between you know, between the two. So we have chapters 25 to 39, right? Um, chapters uh, 35, chapter 38, uh, this is the inner biblical interpretation. But let's give an overview right here. So Moses, Musa, Musa, our black lawgiver. And we say he was black because there's been a lot of, a lot of, um, racist and and downrightly incorrect um, suppression of the fact that the Beta Israel were Afro-Shemitic peoples. Even Hebrew itself 
is known linguistically as an Afro-Semitic language. And, you know, the people who have Afros are black people. And you can see it even in the Bible, the Ancient of Days also has this wool, and Christ himself has this wool. Now, brothers and sisters, this is not a reason for us to put up our head awfully high just because we were born black. You understand? Know because to whom more is much is given, more much is required. So to whom much is given, much is required. So let us kind of get past that kind of kindergarten level. You understand? Recognizing, yes, they are black like us, but now we have to put in the work. You understand? And to show the real moral supremacy. You understand? So when we talk about black supremacy, let's call it Jah's supremacy, God's supremacy. You understand? And if we, as the people, the ethnic people, the black people, have any supremacy, may it be in the light of the King of Kings and his Christ. That means a moral theocracy. Now, Moses, which, lay, you know, here's where we get the real foundation of the tabernacle in spirit and in truth. Moses, or Musa, he convoked the Beta Israel, or the Israelites, to build the Mishkan, to build the tabernacle. Moses, Moshe, Musa, he started by reminding them of Jah's commandment to keep the Sabbath, to keep the Senbet, of complete rest, according to Exodus chapter 35, verses 1 to 3. This is where we begin this particular um, portion of our reading and feeding. So let's see if we have this, if we have this, um, ready to go right here. Um Besama Ab Wawel Wamenfes Kadus Ahadu Amlak the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the one God, Yahweh Ahad, Ahadu Amlak. So the Sabbath in Israel says, and Moses gathered all the congregation. This is the gathered, assembled, gathered, Vayakhel Vayahel, um, Sebsibol, Sebisibol. And Musa gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said to them, These are the words. These are the, the, the Devrim or Devarim, the Devrim, the Dabarim. These, this is the Dabar. You know what I'm saying? This is the Devar. These are the words which Yahweh hath commanded that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you a an holy day, a day that is holy because it's set aside for a very special and important purpose, a Sabbath of rest, to Yahweh, a Sabbath of rest to Jah. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. Now, I know that might sound to some folks to seem awfully um, draconian. You understand that, that, you know, that, that's like, wow, that's like, man, that's some serious stuff. But let us understand the Old Testament, the Torah. Let's be able to take the veil off of our eyes, you see. And the veil is taken off of our eyes in Christos in, and through the Moshiach. So if we now look at the Old and study the Old Testament from the light and the illumination of Joshua, of Yeshua, of Jesus, and his testimony and his teaching, then we can understand the spiritual significance. For example, we speak about the tabernacle. Let's, let's touch on what is this all about. This is about, this is about building, right? Right? Building. This is about building a 
well, actually, not a, but the, right? Tabernacle, right? Now, the tabernacle in the Hebrew, here's the code word, is mish, right? Mish, mishkan, right? Bamarinya, we call it the din qua ne. We call it the din qua, right? Now, the idea basically, right? The idea basically comes down to tent, right? It's a tent, right? And a tent. Now, in the Bible, from Old Testament to New Testament, you'll find that there's a certain um, uh, symbolic logic even in the words that I use. You know what I'm saying? So if you did a little biblical um, word search or research and you look on tent, or you get a concordance as we have there, and you look on tent. Let me just give you an example of this so you can understand that the Old Testament, right, is according to the Bible, and, and we're in Bible country, you understand? We're in, we're in Haile Selassie's glory land, the B-I-B-L-E. You know, according to the Bible, the Old Testament is, is, is a shadow of the true things which were to come afterwards. So the Almighty gave us an example by this shadow. So it's impossible to say, well, one is like a, a, a New Testament Christian, and they don't really check for the Old Testament. That's a deception. That's a lie. You understand? Because you cannot say that Christ fulfilled anything that's in the Scripture, because the Scripture he was talking about is the Belui Kidan, or is Torah, the Tanakh, the Old Testament. So when we look up tent, let's look up tent. Tent right here says that this word, and this is from an old Cruden's, Cruden's Complete Concordance, kind of worn out, but it's still very serviceable. This word is often used of the tabernacle. Tents were the only homes of the early patriarchs. Their use was common through all Bible times, as it is now among desert tribes. Now, this is a, a little point aside, but I think it's just relative to try to paint a picture. We was watching um, one of these travel shows or something, um, and they were showing, like, uh, uh, I think Arabia or some Arab immigrant or Bahrain or whatever like that in that part of the world where, you know, the desert Arabs still live. You know, they got the oil money, so forth and so on. But they basically still live in their cultural surroundings, basically tents. And they showed us inside this one um, Arab, Arab, you know, his, his house, you know, his, his, his tent. And when you look inside, you'd be like, this is a tent? A tent? A tent? You know what I mean? The tent was better than some, some prefab condominiums and some of these kind of houses, these so-called fiberglass and fiberglass structures. But the, and it was, it's, a, it's a show that, you know, people would judge it from the outside and think it means some little rinky-dinky tent. No, that's not what um, Bezalia, you know what I'm saying, or Bezalia, who was the, the, the chief Hebraic um, um, mason and builder. And we're going to touch a little bit more on, on building and, 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 and masonry because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of misdirection. You know, ones are being hoodwinked and bamboozled. You know, oh, this was a mason, that's a mason. John wants real masons, you understand, real builders, real ones who have the spirit of wisdom and can receive the spirit of Elohim, the spirit of Jah, Rastafari, to fulfill his word, you understand, according to his instructions. That means we have to take time out to learn, well, what is he instructing us in? And so this area of scripture that a lot of folks might just gloss past, oh, it's a tabernacle, and, well, we're not under the law no more, so we don't have to worry about that. But then, you know, they have these fly-by-night so-called churches, illegal Jehovah worships, and they all be using this language of tabernacle and church and temple and ask them, you know, to define these things. And then you go and look up what the definition is. So who are you going to trust? You understand? You're going to trust um, your lying 
ears and eyes, you understand, or you're going to trust the word. You're going to trust them who's saying that they're doing this in Jesus' name, and Christ says something different here in his word. So when Christ speaks of in the New Testament, you hear the scriptures, and the scriptures say, or it is written, even that test of Ha-Shatan or Satan in the wilderness against our master Adoni Joshua, notice something, he quoted scriptures, he quoted Torah. You know That's what allowed and enabled him to overcome the um, hoodwink, bamboozle, scheme, conspiracies of the enemy in the wilderness. And Christ taught us something very important in that. Most folks don't pay attention really to that. You know what I'm saying? They might quote what Christ said, but they don't refer to the reference source that he was referring to, but then they would tell you that, well, Christ, he fulfilled the Old Testament types and parables and similes and examples. Well, and the only way you're going to know that is to check out the Old Testament. So you can't build a penthouse starting with the penthouse. You can't even start the first floor. you got to gain the foundation. You understand? So, you know, as it says, um, have to go down. You know, one will have to go down to the foundation. They will have to go down. And this is why we're spending this time, both for ourselves as well as to make us more effective, you understand, in, in knowing the message, communicating it, and we pray that many of you all are picking up on this, brothers and sisters, because it's very important to our, to our success in the world to come in the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. So that gives you a basic overview of, of tent, but there's a, there's, a, there's a scripture here that is often, is often uh, quoted, um, tent and tabernacle, tent and tabernacle. Okay, well, it's mostly Old Testament verses. I think, I think the way it says tabernacle. Let's look, look up tabernacle. Like I said, we, we're referring to um, the Cruden's uh, Concordance. And now, you know, there's a lot of resources out there on the Internet. Some of them you can download for free, you know what I mean? You know, maybe too many pages to print out, but definitely you can, you know, there's, there's a lot of knowledge is going to and fro. Daniel's prophecy is being fulfilled, you understand? And um, if you want to be a part of John's will, then you have to learn what John's will is all about, to be saved from this perishing and evil, this evil world. But check this out. This, this, this is going to be a little more. We'll go a little more into tabernacle right here. Because basically what is contained in this Torah portion is some attention to, to details. Because we learn forward that Moses told them to collect gifts. Told them to collect gifts of materials from those whose heart so moved them. It wasn't to go around begging and conning. No, no, to collect what the materials that they needed to do the work that was set before them from those whose heart so moved them, you know, to those who, who could give cheerfully. And what kind of gifts? You understand? What kind, it was gifts of gold, silver, copper, colored yarn, fine linen, goat's hair, tanned ram skins. Uh, acacia wood, olive oil, spices, lapis lazuli, wow, and other stones that they would need. And the people gave this word. They were like, oh, I don't know, Moses and them going to do it this so far. No, they heard the word and they responded accordingly, and the work was able to be done. This is Exodus 35, verses 4 to 9. Now, Musa the head of the fraternal order of the Lewawiyan or the Israelites, in fact, that's the next book we're about to get into, um, which is Leviticus, coming up this week, coming forward, and we're going to have, Yah willing, the Leviticus, or uh, Vayikra, is called in the Hebrew, or Rit Zer Lewawiyan, available too, the Hebrew book of Leviticus, which is the Torah portion, volume, volume 3. But let's just go through this overview, and we'll get a little bit deeper into tabernacle. Because I thought this was also very, very important, where Moses invited all who were skilled. 
he invited all of those who had skills. You understand? All those who had who had skills, who had who, who had some knowledge of a particular craft that was necessary. Builder skills, jewelers, um, seamstresses, you know, um, ones like Bezaliel, who was like a master, the Hebrew master mason. Bezalia was more of a master mason than so-called the, the Hiram or Hiram Abyss that you hear about in, in counterfeit so-called Eurocentric free masonry or masonry. Um, Moses invited all who were skilled to make the tabernacle, to make the mishkan, to make the dinquan, the, uh, the debtor or the deptera, you know saying, the tent, its furnishings, and the priest vestments, and the priest vestments. So we learn that even the clothing is important. You see what I'm saying? The clothing, you see the clothing we got on, okay, yeah, but it's time to change these filthy garments that we're wearing. They don't care how much you paid for it. You understand? Whose logo is that? What does that logo mean? You know, um, we're going to learn that even the priest's vestments were and acted as atonement for the chatiyat or the shortcoming or the sin or the missing of the mark of the people. So when we talk about our Ethiopian Hebrew clothing, it's more than just a so-called fashion statement. You know what I'm saying? It's a liberty. Truly, it is a way of life. So all of this we're learning from our Torah, our Rastafari um, sabbatical studies and, and Torah readings and feedings. Exodus chapter 35, verses 10 to 19. Now, the Beta Israel, the Israelites, they brought the gifts that Moses requested. So Moses asked, and he received. He received from those whose hearts moved them, who then grudge giving gifts to the construction and making of the tabernacle. Exodus chapter 35, verses 20 to 29. Now, Musa, Moshe, Moses, he announced that Jah Ha Elohim had singled out Bezaliel and Aholiah to endow them with the skills needed to construct the Mishkan, with the skills needed to construct the tabernacle. So, so Jah had singled out these two men and Bezaliel in particular, or, or Basileel in particular, and Aholiah to endow them with the skills. Now, make a note of the word skills. Let me, let me just show you this right here. Let me, let me go to the board right here. So in order to build, what's the first qualification we have? We first of all have, um, we can say one is the gifts, right, the gifts. You understand? The, we could call them the free will offerings of the people. Let's put that right there. Free will. You know, like if if one is going to debate the, oh, I don't know, uh, you know, people always ask for money. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you can go through that, then just leave it alone. You know, there's, there's, there's others who will be moved to give, and they will be blessed for their giving, because their heart and their mind is ready. And if And if you think otherwise, then... You're obviously not ready. Secondly, the second point that we find right here, according to this particular approach to to these studies, and let's just move this, let's just move this right here. According to approach to these studies right here, the second thing that I think is really important is that 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 there were skills, there were people, right? There were people, in other words, the right people, in other words, who possess the right skills, right? The right skills, or in other words, who possess the wisdom. Now, we know that wisdom, when we study the ancients, we know that wisdom was always connected with the, the, the specialized schools. Today, we call them colleges and universities, Yovas. But in that particular day and time, some call these the mystery schools out of Egypt. So it's clear 
that Moshe, Moses, our black lawgiver, you know what I'm saying? We can't even say our Ethiopian Hebrew lawgiver, that he was he was um learned in the wisdom of the Egypts, right? Of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in word and deed. So he was acquainted with it. Our question is this was Basila El was a holy app. It's obvious that they must have been cool. When you read the story, it's like Moses said, build an ark. And it's very obvious that um, Basila, uh, Basila El or Bezalel, he didn't have to say, well, what kind of ark? You know, uh, how, you know he, he was able to do exactly, so he was familiar with that wisdom. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that when we talk about masonry, you understand, know white supremacy makes up the story about Solomon, Jubilo, Jubilo, Jubilone, and all this other kind of yik yak, patty wag, give the dog a bone and everything. But when we study the scriptures, we go to the very root. And why they don't go that far is because they will have to trace it to Egypt. And if they trace it to Egypt, since Egypt was one sixth of Ethiopia, Think about it. Egypt was one-sixth of ancient Ethiopia, and Ethiopia is where it begins, the root and the truth of it. So that means they would have to basically connect black folks. So what they do is they make up a, another narrative, you know, like they do with so many other things, make up these narratives, and then sell us a false bill of goods. And then we begin to have psychological problems, think like, oh, man, we never did anything really good. We was always like slaves. No, that's not, that's, that's not so. Maybe to our sins, but not in John's eyes. He brought us out, and he's bringing us out for a reason as well. But remember, it's about those whose hearts move them, those who have the Spirit of God, those who receive it. You understand? It's not about those who deceive it. You understand? Or those who don't want to admit it in terms of believe it or accept it as true. So the skills, Moses, Moses, um, he announced that God had singled out Bezalel or Holiab to endow them with skills, with these skills, these skills needed to construct the tabernacle. Now, why do I focus on that so much? I focus on that because there's practical application for us in this very day and time. You know, we, you know, we, we don't want to really go into the, the Shashimani um, discussion right now. We need to prepare. Once we prepare ourselves, you know what I'm saying, not only go into that discussion, we'll be able to go into the land and fulfill what his majesty already asked for. He said, next time, send the right people. You understand? Know Send the people who have the spirit of Jah, who truly have the spirit of God. You understand? Know that means that they are moving in the glory of God based on the B-I-B-L-E, which is message for my part, I glory in the Bible, you understand? Know and have the right spirit, and then they can construct and fulfill the proper work. You see, the worst letdown that we as Rastafari have given our Godfather and King of Kings, even though some of us could say, that was the older generation, the elders, but we still are going to continue unless we make a change or a difference. And this is an opportunity. Now is a time of crisis, but now is a time of opportunity, brothers and sisters. So let's use this time that we have wisely. So Bezalel and Aholiab, they had the skills needed. That's the key thing, the skills needed to construct the tabernacle. Exodus chapter 35, verses 30 to 35. So when you hear folks talking about, oh, this is a tabernacle, that's it. Don't play with Jah. No, 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 no. Don't play with Jah. And then, then have his word there and acting like an ignoramus. He doesn't give specific instructions. Now, people might say, well, that was in that time. There's no reason for that. You know, why did he give, you know, these measurements down to very precise measurements, you understand? There's a reason for that. Some of this we, we will be able to go into, but some of it hopefully you will discover in your own studies. And we highly encourage ones to study and find the truth for themselves. Don't accept what we're saying, you understand? But don't reject it if you're ignorant, you understand? Hear what we're saying and go and check it out. In other words, trust 
but verify it for yourself. Now, Moses called on them and all skilled persons to undertake the task. I said that I was going to highlight this before in here, this particular, you know, there's nothing have a good highlighter for your books. Um, Moses called on them and all skilled persons to undertake the task. Did Moses call on everybody just, we just need everybody just to do something? Is that what, no, no. Let me show you this again, and you can read this, Exodus 36, um, as we go to verse 1 to, verse 1 to 2. Moses called on them, the, the, the chief Hebrew master mason, um, Basileel and Aholiab, and his, 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 well, Holy I will be like his assistant, in, in other words, and also other skilled persons, male and female. So, so please drop all that sexism, that, 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 that lying, you know, that lying error against Jah word. And some of you sisters, I, can, I know, you may not know, you may have heard from things, some things from people who say they know the Bible, so forth and so on. And, you know, but study and, and, and learn the truth for yourself. That's what we would advise. Because a lot of folks be saying, oh, the Bible's sexist. And then we actually see from studying, there's a whole different view. In fact, it's a very balanced view. You understand? Um, Obviously, this end times culture doesn't recognize it because they are the ones who really are suffering because of not wanting to know Jah. In fact, this is the whole generation, this generation that's worshiping the golden calf that almost grew up apart from, from a true foundation in God. They may go to church every Sunday, hear some charismatic speak, but where's the teaching? Where's the practical application? Where is the revelation to the lost black sheep of who they really are and what Jah's purpose, what the almighty God, creator of the heavens, the earth, the, the sea, and all that is there and has, has, has for them? Where, where is that being told? Oh, it's not really about that. It's about whether you're black, white, red, yellow, green. You know, people get stupid. You understand? Let's deal with the fact that we are black and we're in this situation. Who are we? Where we're from? Let's learn the half of the story that hasn't been told. You understand? It, 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 it's unjust. They're tampering, you understand, with evidence. They're trying to pre pre prevent, you understand, the prosecution of justice in the earth. And the first key to this world being turned around for good or really the change the world's not really going to change but for the for the new world of the king of kings to come in it's about us brothers and sisters and i think we all know it individually we got work you understand but collectively too this is these are the gates zion gates is open wide now the beta israelites the beta israel or the beta israel they brought more than was needed now, when we talk about these gifts, the free will offerings, they brought more gold than was needed, silver, copper, yarn, fine linen, goat's ears, acacia wood, olive spices, a lapis of lazuli, and other precious gems and stones now, diamonds, all of that. So this makes me think and say, you know, there's a reason why we have all this bling. Think about it. There's a reason why we have been um, kind of uh, uh, positively affected by um, wealth, you know, black folks. Because black people do have a lot of wealth amongst them. It's just that they're so ass backward like donkeys that how to make a slave slick woolly made them that they don't recognize the purpose. And most of the preachers and pastors, not all, not all, but the majority of them are counterfeit. They need to sit down and learn the first, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the, the basic lessons again. You understand? Know the first principles. They need to be taught again. You understand? Know but instead, they got people on this, on this kind of merry-go-round to nowhere. Anyway, the Israelites had brought more than was needed. So Moses proclaimed an end to the collection. Can you imagine that? Have you ever, 
<laughs> Have you ever been in the church or something like that, one of these so-called black Christian churches, or any, any even other churches where they're getting so much? They say, we need X amount of money to do such and such. And they're getting so much money, so much willing donation to say, listen, we got more than we need. Did, did you ever hear them? That's because Jah didn't send them. You see, right here, because of that overwhelming um, um, goodwill, free will offering from the people, that Moses recognized, you know what, we, we got enough that, that we need. It wasn't to rob the people. We all contribute, you understand, towards a sanctuary. And we're going to learn why the sanctuary or the tabernacle was and is so important. In fact, the tabernacle is the cornerstone of any community, the sanctuary, the holy place. You understand? If that people know the true and living God. Yo, was it there? If they're not, they might need a club or something like that, you know, some nonsense. You know, but the skilled workers, they fashioned the tabernacle, we learn, Exodus chapter 36, verses 8 to 38. Um, Basilael, or Bezalel, he made the ark. He made the cover, he made the table, he made the menorah, he made the ancient altar, the incense altar, he made the altar for sacrifice, he made the laver, and he made the enclosure, the enclosure um, for the, the, the tabernacle, or we can say that, that four score, you know, square, that square, the court, in other words, the court. According to Exodus chapter 37, verses 1 to Exodus chapter 38, verse 20. Now, that right there, beloved brothers and sisters, would be the overview of this Torah portion, reading and feeding, basically. That's, that, that's a simple overview. But, you know, Jah, his love, his way, his guidance, protection, his light, his illumination is in the details. So we, got, we must study the details, and that's what we will hopefully be able to go into a little bit, perhaps in the next couple of days in some videos, you understand? Or ones and ones, please go into yourself. But these are areas that we're going to study again. We have to go over this again. We're doing this because this is a sabbatical presentation to help to encourage ones and ones and hopefully inspire others to, um, to study, show themselves approved. So when we talk about the work going forward. You understand? We, 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 we already are connecting in spirit because we already know what the instructions are. You understand? Once we know what the instructions are, then we can be about, you understand, the structure, the construction, the building of the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, the next inner biblical interpretation, which covers uh, chapters 25 to 39, basically speaks about the pattern there was a particular pattern of instruction, and there was a pattern of construction. So as they were instructed, how can we put this? As, as the, if we look at how, how, how the instruction came about, I think Schofield makes a good note right here. We're going to still touch on the tabernacle momentarily, but when others have made a... Uh, a good relative point about this. I think they, they talk about this right here, how John basically, um, he started from himself. You, you know, he started from himself. Here, here we go right here on page 101 of the Schofield Study Bible. Check this out for a moment. Because we're talking about the pattern, you know, the pattern of instruction. There's a particular pattern of instruction. And there's a pattern of construction of the tabernacle and its furnishing. So these are two different. One is how was how were they instructed, and then look at how it was constructed. Now the footnote here um, under chapter 25, which actually begins this portion of 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 the tabernacle, the material, so forth and so on. It says that all begins with the ark. All begins with the ark or the tabot. All begins with the Aaron, the Haron, the Aaron in the Hebrew, Bamarinya, um, and the good is Tabot, which in the completed tabernacle 
was placed in the Holy of Holies because, because, why? Because in Revelation, John begins from himself. So when John is revealing something, he must begin from himself, working outward towards man. So when we look at how the how John brought forward this revelation, he first started with himself. So we see he first started with the ark, and then it goes outward from the ark to everything leading out to the people. So he begins from himself, working outward towards man. Now, as an approach, how do we krav, kara, how do we approach the worshiper, right, the worshiper, the faithful and true, begins from himself. So now how do we approach in our individual um, orientation, we must begin from our self, moving toward Jah, moving towards God, where? In the Holy of Holies. So when we look at the, at the schismatic and the pattern of the tabernacle, we can clearly, maybe more clearly demonstrate that in some of the other presentation um, forms, you know, a picture they say, paint a thousand words, where you can actually see that. So the same order is followed in the Levitical offerings. And we're about to get into that next week, John willing. Leviticus chapter 1, verse 5. Now, in approach, man begins where? At the brazen altar, right? Man begins at the brazen altar, which is a type. It's a type of the cross. It's a type of the mescal, where in the fire of judgment, in the fire of judgment, atonement is made. You know, we ask ourselves, why we got to be going through such hard times? Some of us may even ask that, that kind of question about our own personal lives, you know. And every man thinketh that his burden, in that sense, is the heaviest. But notice this, this, this pattern here, right? In the fire of judgment, Atonement is made. And as more and more signs start to reveal, because some people still laugh, laugh these teachings off, laugh off what I and I and ones like I and I are about. Sometimes some of you all who are, are not quite um, anchored yet in it might get upset about ones who don't take this serious and don't think it's really about that. But as their world starts to crumble, you know, the Babylonian world, the seclorum, the system, you understand? When they can't get no cell service and, and they can't Facebook or Facebook or, you know, Twitter and, and tweet and all this other kind of stuff, and they have to come back to the foundation. You understand? They have to deal with real life. You know, John helped them. But it's the fire of judgment where atonement is made. So when you look at the tabernacle, you understand that if you were to lay out the tabernacle, let, Let's just do a, a, a little brief layout of, of a tabernacle right here, right? Let us take this, right? And I don't know if you can see this right here, right? This is the, say this is the, the courtyard, right? Here's the entrance, right? Here's the brazen altar, right? Here's the lava, right? Here is the Mishkan, you understand? And about right here is the curtain. Here is the Ark of the Covenant, right? Here's the Ark of the Covenant. Over here will be the menorah. Over here would be the, the altar of Aishans. And right here will be the table of show, shoe bread, right? Now, you had 12 tribes. One, two, three, right? One, two. Two, three, one, two, three, and over here you have one, two, three. So you have three, six, nine, twelve. So the twelve tribes actually would encamp and encamp at three at each of the corners. So when the scripture here says that Jot, he begins, right? He begins here, right? He begins here. He starts with himself, 
right here in, in the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant, the Shekinah or Sekinah, the Sekinah glory. But when we, we have to actually begin right here. Let me just make an X here. We begin right here. We begin at the, at the brazen altar because it's in the fire of judgment that atonement, right? And this is all about, what is it? Atonement, or we should say, uh, Rastafari pick, pick sense of nonsense and word, sound, and power. It, it's what? At one meant, right? Coming together at one. Now, of course, that's not, that's not the fullness of the Hebraic and the Ethiopic when we look at the word kapar. It has an idea of cover, something that, that, that covers. The real atonement actually comes through the cross and Christ. Now, what's important about this is that, remember, we, we lay this out on the side, so I, I hope you can see this. We lay this out on the side that if you were to place the cross, right, if you were to place the cross, let's go like this. Here's the cross, right? Here's the cross right there. And you could either put it right here, right? And you can see, it's, it's not equilateral right here, but it's just a sample, that this will be where Christ's head on the cross would be, right? This will be where the head is, and this will be his foot. That's why when it talks about coming to the feet of Jesus or Yeshua or Joshua is very important. And what the woman did in, in, in anointing his feet and, and wiping it with her, her hair and her tears, it was very significant because just like the, there were the women who, who, who assembled outside of the, of the tabernacle square, you know, who gave their mirrors. They had these mirrors. They donated their mirrors, and the mirrors by Basila El, they were made into the, the water pot. I mean, the, the laver. Well, it's like a laver, a basin, but into the laver. And they said that it was so, it was so clear that when the priest would wash his hands and his feet, would look into this and be able to see one's own reflection. So Hawari Apollos and the other um, disciples and apostles in the New Testament, especially Paul, they give a beautiful demonstration, you understand, on the relation in Christology or in the logos of Christ for these Old Testament types. So this was a shadow you understand? This was a shadow of the real image. Now, one thing I want to share with you before we pause and, 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 and take, a, take a part two to this is let's just go to verse 40. I, I, mean, I mean, chapter 40, actually, chapter 40 of Exodus. And those of a Schofield Study Bible, perhaps you can see this a little bit clearer than others, but it's a reference that says compare. It says, compare Ephesians 11.22, 11.22, right? It says, what the Shekinah or Sekinah glory was to tabernacle, that's the first, the tent, and then later on in Solomon's time, then we would get the, the temple, so the tabernacle and temple, that the spirit is to the holy temple, the church, and to the temple, which is the believers or the mitmanon's body. So what we're learning is that the temple and the tabernacle is a, a symbolic tabernacle of man. Just like in ancient Egypt, there's what's known as um, the, the temple of man. And they look at this temple from ancient Egypt, and you can actually see it's almost like a man's it's made in proportion with a man's body. And, and, and these things really make you stop and, and think, you know, how deep is Yah's way? You know, most folks cut it off and say the Egyptians didn't know, but they obviously did know it. It was ones like Moses, 
and uh, by Silla Ale and others who preserve that. And now we can reclaim that in the proper way that the Almighty intended it from the very beginning. So they give us 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 19. So we see that there is a likeness, right? Let's just get back to where, forward to where we're at in this particular portion. There's a likeness to man and in particular to the Savior. So the Savior on the cross, the tabernacle, you know what I'm saying? But man as well. So we begin from these, you could say, from, from, from the foot, right, of the cross. You understand? We begin from, where it says, until he makes his enemies his what? His footstool. This is why the brazen, you know, the brazen altar is, is very significant, and this is where we as the mitmanon, as, as those who have amen, the faithful and the true, we begin at the, with the fires of judgment. You understand? The fires of judgment. You know? And he says his word in Jeremiah, his word, you understand, is like fire shut up in my bones. Hebrew says that our God is a consuming fire. So you see a, a, another connection, you know, with the fires of judgment, the word, the purifying. Now check this out for baptism. What does Christ say? Well, Christ says that, um, well, let's first go to John. John said what? John said that, um, you see, I baptize with water. The one who's coming after me, he baptized with uh, um, the spirit and, and, and fire. So we see that baptism is, is, is Selassie, it has trifold. 